I'm Lena Hassanel. Welcome to BizWorld. The coca export value is expected to increase by twofold to 14 billion ringgit in 2022 compared to last year. Considering coca has great potential to be one of the main contributors to the country's export revenue, Plantation Industries and Commodities Minister Datuk Zuraida Kamaruddin said aggressive efforts need to be implemented to increase production. 5,700 je hektas yang kita baru uh, menanam. Jadi kalau ikutkan, kalau kita nak increase production tu, kita kena lagi uh, 10 times more of uh, yang ada sekarang. The Malaysian Coca Board is also developing various programs to produce high-quality coca beans, in addition to expanding market activity through e-commerce platform. Meanwhile, the coca trade hub at Tanjung Pelepas Port, Johor, will be completed in the near future, which will boost coca exports. Last year, Malaysia exported coca to global markets, especially United States, with a value of 7 billion ringgit. AirAsia Group has announced that Bursa Malaysia's Practice Note 17 PN17 relief measures resulting in the group's triggering suspended criteria was not classified as a PN17 listed issuer. It said the group continued the, to trigger the prescribed criteria of the main market listing requirements and an application was submitted to Bursa for the relief period to be extended beyond January 7th. However, after considering all facts and circumstances, including all written representations and documents submitted before Bursa Malaysia, the local stock exchange has decided to dismiss the appeal. Prior to this, AirAsia was required to reassess its condition at the expiry of the relief period pursuant to Bursa Circular on additional relief measures dated April 16, 2020 and February 17, 2021. Additional relief measures were announced on April 16, 2020, whereby Bursa Malaysia said companies that triggered any of the suspended criteria between April 17, 2020 and June 30, 2021 would not be classified as a PN17 or GN3 company for 12 months. AirAsia said further announcement will be made in due course regarding this matter. The impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the fintech industry, opportunities and challenges in digital financial services, cryptocurrency concerns, time to regulate or not, new opportunities for fintech and unlocking the potential of fintech in Malaysia. Fintech Association of Malaysia President Karen Poir speaks to Money Matters this Saturday at 5pm only on DVTiga. United Overseas Bank Limited Company, UOB, has entered into agreements to acquire Citigroup's consumer banking businesses in Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand and Vietnam for 915 million Singapore dollar. They comprise of Citigroup's unsecured and secured lending portfolios, wealth management and retail deposit businesses. UOB CEO Wee Yi Chiang said the proposed acquisition would further strengthen and deepen UOB's ASEAN franchise, and the exercise is expected to be completed between mid-2022 and early 2024, depending on the progress and outcome of the regulatory approval process. Completion of the acquisition in each country will be conditional on obtaining regulatory approvals relevant to each country. Stockbroking firm Rakuten Trade has expanded its shares, trading access into the foreign markets, starting with the U.S. and is expected to flag off within two to three weeks. According to its CEO, Kazumasa Misu, this is one of its strategies to diversify revenue as the firm was impacted by the, by the decline in Malaysian stock market towards the end of last year. We would like to give the, uh, the uh, trader uh, the triggers, triggers to start trading. Yes, everybody knows the uh, okay. The, as I mentioned, Google, Facebook, Tesla. But uh, the, some of the uh, people in Malaysia don't know the Malaysian shares. So that's why the, we would try to provide the, uh, uh, the the hint, the trigger to tr start trading. He explained both domestic and foreign equities will be offered on a single dashboard with low brokerage fee for a seamless, fully digital trading experience. The company will also ensure a more consistent growth in new retail investors year on year. 
As of 31st December last year, it had activated over 236,000 trading accounts and surpassed 95 billion ringgit in total trading value on Bursa Malaysia since its inception. That's all the time we have for Bizworld. I'm Lena Hassanel. Thank you for watching and keep tuning in to TV Tiga.